Hey everyone, what is a person supposed to look for in friendship? Take a look at what Jordan Peterson has to say on this matter, and then we'll talk about it in just a second. They won't tell you why, you know, you're stupid and, and why that bad thing happened to you and how something worse happened to them once and, you know, derail the whole conversation. You can actually tell them bad news and they'll listen. So that's a good thing. And then this is a weirder thing. You can tell them good news and they'll help you celebrate. And that's a really good way of deciding who you should have around you. Because if you have someone around you, you know, something good happens to you, and you're kind of afraid to even admit it because, you know, God, something good happened to you. It's like, that, you let that be known, and it'll certainly be taken away. So, you know, you, you come out and you sort of tell someone half-heartedly that something good happened to you, and they, they give you a whack and then talk about, you know, so the great thing that happened to them three years ago. Or worse, the great thing that happened to someone that they knew three years ago. You know, it's like... Go away from that person. They're not helpful to you. It's very easy to feel bad for somebody. And so when a person brings bad news to another person, it's a lot easier to arouse sympathy. But when, when you know somebody, when, it's, when a person is truly your friend, you can bring good news to them and they'll just celebrate with you, not bring up, try to one-up you with something that happened to them, uh, as Jordan Peterson says, or something that they knew happened to somebody else that outdoes you, that they'll just genuinely be happy for you and want to celebrate with you. Let's continue. And they're not helpful to themselves either. And so you want to surround yourself, you've got to think about this. You've got to surround yourself with people who want the best for the best part of you. You can hang around with weasels and losers that are trying to pull you down to justify the fact that they're spiraling downhill as well. And you know, the upside of that is you don't have to have any responsibility and you can all whine about how wretched life is, you know, so that's pretty attractive. But I would say it's also a me bad medium to long-term plan. And so it's, it's acceptable and desirable to try to surround yourself with people who are facilitating your development. You know, and you might say, well, I've got people around, I know them well, you know, they're, they're, they're not doing that well, and, and, they're, and, and they don't fit into that category. It's like, what's your point? What are you going to do with them, exactly? If they'll, if they'll listen and cooperate with you and move towards a better future, great. If they don't pay any attention and they keep doing the same damn things over and over and they're not going anywhere and it's painful, then maybe the proper thing to do is say, you just have your misery. I'll go off and have my life. And maybe you'll wake up at some point in the future and think that's a better way of being. Because just putting up with it is, all, well, they call that enabling, right? You put up with that sort of behavior, you're providing tacit consent for it and even tacit approval. It's like, it's a bad idea. You have... I would say both the right and the responsibility to surround yourself with people who are good for the best part of you. That is an interesting way to look at it. We should surround ourselves with people who are going to encourage and bring out the best parts of ourselves. There's an interesting spiritual idea that's brought out in Judaism that when a person achieves true friendship, that there's a metaphysical bond that exists between them. That if a person really uh, has the opportunity to, if a person really dedicates himself to care about the other person, uh, and it, this this relationship is created in a truly altruistic sort of way, that the bond the bond that is forged between them uh, is is godly. It's something that transcends the material world. We find an example of this happening in the book of Job, Job chapter 2, verse 11, where it says that the friends of Job come from 800 miles away because they sensed, even from all the way and at a great distance, that there was something wrong in Job's life. Because the establishment of a true friendship transcends time and space. And so these are the types of things, ideally, in, in friendship that we should be looking for. Something that is deeper, something that is uh, mutual, but something that is, from our vantage point, completely focused on the goodness and development and help and support and love of the other person. Have a wonderful day, everybody.